Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss how you can connect with Python with Snowflake using key pair based authentication. Okay, so already in my previous video, several times I have explained in detail how to connect Python with Snowflake using user ID password based authentication, right? Now you just think when you are working for a client in production environment, if you are directly hard coding the user id password these kind of secret credentials in your main python code or maybe in some config file that will make the system less secure right so always it is suggested not to put some hard coded user id password in your code so for that what we can do one way is basically we can store that secret credentials in secret manager or those kind of AWS service okay and then we can set up the connectivity in between the execution environment where you are executing ETL pipeline and every time we can fetch the secret credentials from that particular secret manager or those kind of password storer locations right that is one option but there is another option which is much more secure than using raw user ID password and that is nothing but key pair based authentication with snowflake support okay and this is not some concept which is specific to snowflake only this particular concept is applicable in many other pipelines or softwares whatever you say they are also okay using open ssl basically we create some public key and private key and that one we are using for authentication okay now what is the fundamental concept behind that let us try to understand okay so suppose this is your local machine okay that can be a ec2 instance or that can be an emr this kind of aws services okay and this is your suppose snowflake cloud now here you are running your python code and you want to set up the connectivity using key pair based authentication so what we do first first we create public key and private key okay two different keys we create using OpenSSL in this particular local host or EC2 or in EMR. Okay, right? That is the first step. And then we store the public key in our cloud. Okay, that is remote server. In this case, it is Snowflake. Okay. Now, next time, whenever we need to connect in between this particular system and this Snowflake, what we will do? Already public key is stored in Snowflake and we will take the responsibility to securely store the private key file okay that one we will be basically sending to snowflake okay so ssh private key we will be sending to snowflake okay and snowflake already have that public key so this particular already stored public key will be used to authenticate this particular private key okay so stored public key is used to verify the private key what we are sending okay and if the validation is successful then the connectivity will be set up and after that you can use that particular connection for python or for PySpark, whatever required okay so the thing is at least it, this is much more secure than using hard-coded user id and password to create the connection in between python and snowflake okay rather than using user id password here we are using Key, key based authentication okay public key private key public key we are storing in snowflake private key we can give 755 access or restricted access in our linux machine so that others cannot misuse that right and then we are basically using sending that private key to snowflake and using the public key which is already stored it is validating and setting up the connection okay so now let's see how it is done from scratch okay so for this particular explanation I am going to launch an EC2 instance which is having a Linux machine, okay? Because in most of the cases, client use Linux machine or Linux instance, whether you are considering EC2 or whether you are considering EMR, okay? Because that is much more comfortable with respect to programming point of view. So that's why I am going to explain this key pair generation, public key, private key generation concept and how to use that with respect to Linux. But with little twist, you can apply the same concept in other systems as well. So you can check the documentation and understand those easily. Okay. So without any further delay, as a first step, what I will do, I will launch an EC2 instance which is having a Linux image. Okay. So here we can go to launch instance, right? And here demo snowflake testing 
key pair we can give the name okay and then here os image we have to choose right so here i can choose linux machine right this one free trial eligible one i am choosing as of now okay t2 micro is fine because that is free trial eligible and for key pair i am choosing one particular key which is already existing demo kafka testing okay and keeping all other properties as default i will basically launch the instance okay and here it is successful so here i can go to view all instance now you can refresh this particular page and here see the instance is in pending state right so soon it will be available state then we can start using that okay and for this particular explanation i have basically followed or referred this particular documentation link okay whatever steps are mentioned here those alone only i followed i have just noted in notepad so that i can explain it easily step by step okay that's all so here see it is in running state now what we can do we can basically click on this particular instance and we can take this public ip for dns and we can try to log in in this particular console okay using put tick So here I have chosen my PPK file and I will open this one. Okay. So I'll keep it yes. Login as for Linux. Default one is EC2 user, right? So if you want to confirm that also, you can confirm. You can go to instance. You can click on this and you can click on connect. Okay. That time here, see it is showing username as EC2 user. So it is perfect. We are successfully able to log in to the EC2 console. All I will do, I will change the setting to. Ten thousand, so that it will not be having timeout issue. Okay, that step is done. Now let's follow these steps. Okay, so to generate this Snowflake key pair, first here I will be executing this particular command. Okay, we are using OpenSSL for creating the private key. So here first we are creating the private key, and that private key we are going to store as RSA key dot p eight. Okay, so I will copy this particular one. And then here I will be hitting enter. Okay, so here see generating RSA private key, and here it is asking that if you want to encrypt this particular private key, you can enter the password. Okay, so suppose let's consider the password is socket two, where capital is and replace dollar small. Okay, so let's do that, and we have to re-enter that. So it is done. Okay, now if I do ls, here you will see RSA. Key dot p8 private key is created. Okay, so if you recall our image, we need private key and we need public key. Publicly, we are going to store in Snowflake, but private key we are going to send while we try to create a connection, and then it will this particular private key will be validated against the public key. Okay, right. So here our private key is basically generated. If you want to see the internal content, then you can use cat comment to see that. I can show you that also. So here, see, this is our actual private key. Okay, and the starting part is begin encrypted private key, and the ending part is end encrypted private key. That's what generally it comes. Okay, so now I can clear this screen, and then let's go to next command. Okay, so what we are doing now? We are trying to create a public key on top of this private key. Okay, so and the public key will be stored as RSA underscore key dot pub. Okay, let's execute that. Okay, so here enter the passphrase for RSA underscore key dot p8. That is basically for encryption purpose of that private key. Whatever password we have used, that we have to re-enter, which is Satyajit Ray in this case. Okay, and see here writing RSA key. It is done. Now if I do ls, here you will see here our private key is stored as well as one new public key is generated. And then I can do again cat of that particular public key to view the content of the public key. Okay. So this is basically the content of the public key. This one we can store in Snowflake, and then we can send send the private key, and this public key will validate that particular private key. As simple as that. Okay. So here what we will do, we can keep the absolute path of the keys by using print working directory or some other way because that one we are going to use in our Python code. So print working directory will do. Currently we are in user path that is home user. 
home is to user and along with that what we can do we can keep our private key file name and this becomes the absolute path of the private key file right this is required while having validation with public key right so now what we will do we will do the setup okay so what i have told you public key we are going to store in snowflake so let's do that okay so what i will do i will take the public key content i will just simply copy that one i will go to snowflake and suppose the user for which we want to make this key pair based authentication that is satodru okay see here satodru is basically one user so alter user satodru set rsa public key equal to and here you have to put the public key that's it okay so what it will do it will basically give this particular rsa public key it will assign to this particular user okay so let's do this particular one and see here statement executed successfully okay to verify it is really done or not you can describe the user satodru okay so if i do describe then here you can see in this particular row number 24 rsa public key okay so if i click on that this particular same public key it is showing okay rsa public key of the user so it is perfectly set it okay now we can use that private key with this particular public key for making the connectivity now for working with python and snowflake we need some specific libraries to be installed so let's do that one by one okay and this also i have taken from the snowflake documentation only first i am going to create one virtual environment so here it is done and now here if we do pwd uh, sorry ls here we will see my app we will do cd my app maybe and then if we do ls here we will be seeing env so cd env will be doing and then again if we do ls we will enter in pin and then here if we do ls here we have activate right so here we have to do source activate okay so here we have entered in the virtual environment right and now what we will do see the same steps i have written cd my app cd env cd bin and then source activate and then we will check the python 3 version because based on that only we can properly install the required snowflake connectors okay so it is 3.7 okay so we are going to use 3.7 version for installation so for that as a first step we will be upgrading the pip and it is done and as a next step what we will do we have to do this particular installation as well as per the snowflake documentation let's complete that and once that is done here we will be installing some requirements which is basically required for the snowflake connector okay and because my python is 3.7 i am using requirements underscore 37 if your python is 3.8 then you have to use requirements underscore 38 right all these things i have explained several times so i will just execute that one and here it started installing some specific libraries and then here because i am specifying snowflake version as 2.7.3 so i am going to install the snowflake connector which is for 2.7.3 only right so let's execute that okay so that is also done it is going good and then we need cryptography as well so we have to do that because that one we are going to use for authentication purpose okay and the requirement already satisfied anyway that is done okay so now what we will do we can enter in python console and start working so i can write python 3 and here we are in the python console okay and now what i will do i will basically import some libraries which are required okay so this you can simply get from the documentation only no rocket science code okay if you go to this particular documentation and here if you go to python connector here you will able to see how to do the authentication with key pair okay see the same code i have basically taken here just i am showing you how to use this particular key pair based authentication to make your whole system more secure okay so here it is done right and then here what we are doing here in this particular place you have to give the absolute file path for your private key okay so my private key is basically stored home ec2 user rsa key dot pa that same name 
here I have passed home EC2 user RSA key dot PA. If you are storing your private key in some other location, please mention that. And no need to do other code change. And this particular password we have to mention. Okay, so that private key we have stored as encrypted one, right? So this is the password which is basically we used for encryption purpose of that private key. So that one we have to pass here. So I used Satudru while encrypting the private key, so I am passing Satudru. If you want, you can set up this as environmental variable and take from environment also instead of hard coding. That will make at least more secure, okay? So here I can run this particular one and see it is done, right? And then here I will simply execute this particular code which is taken from the Snowflake documentation. Right, it is also done, perfect. And then here what I will do, I will basically create this Snowflake connector. So user, so what is the user for which we created this particular public key? And we want to do setup, that is basically username is Satudru. So that's why I have given here user is Satudru. Account, so account name I have to mention, right? And I have explained already multiple times. Here you can get basically the account name this is the one which is our account name right so the same account name i have basically mentioned here then private key so what is our private key is pkb so pkb is already defined here that's fine warehouse is compute wh because that's all we have in our snowflake free version database name ramu schema name public so you can specify your own database and schema for which you want to set up the connection okay so i can create the connection using this particular code and let's see, see it's executed successfully. And then here what we can do, we can create the cursor. Okay, suppose I want to execute some SQL query. And what is that SQL query? That SQL query can be, suppose I want to get the maximum load timestamp from this particular table. So if I execute that, here we are getting this value, right? So this one we want to get in Python. So what we will do? So this is the query what I tried to execute. So I will basically take this as query value and I will enter and then here all i will do i will execute this particular query so as this query is returning only single value so i can use fetch one function to get the results right so here i can do and if i print ms here we are getting a tuple okay so you can now do ms of zero and using indexing you can get the value whatever in snowflake you are getting right so that's how you can set up the snowflake and python connection with private key instead of directly using user ID and password. Okay. And suppose you want to unset this particular key. All you have to do, you have to go to Snowflake and execute this particular query. Alter user, for which user you set it up the public key, that user name you have to pass and unset RSA public key. So RSA public key we want to unset. So let's unset that one. And then again, if we do describe user Satudru, here you will able to see at row number 24 it is coming as null so now again if we try to execute this particular connection we will be simply getting error okay so what i can do i can close the uh, older one ctx dot close and then i try to reopen and if i hit enter again see it is giving failed to connect to db this jwt token is invalid right because we unseated the public key so i hope you understood how to set up the secured connection between your system and Snowflake using public key and private key. You will generate your public key and private key using OpenSSL in your system and you will store the public key in this particular Snowflake system and while making connection you will be sending the private key and the stored public key is basically used to verify the private key. If verification is successful, your connection will be created otherwise simply it will throw error. Okay. And once the experiment is done, don't forget to turn down your EC2 instance. Otherwise, unnecessary billing will be happening, right? So this is all for my this video. I'll be posting all the codes and the required links in the description box or in the comment section. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you.